Hey there, fellow vegetable nerds. Thank you so much for hanging out with me once again in my kitchen. It is so nice to be back with you. I have really been missing making videos. I was hoping that I would be able to make something like a, a real deal video before now. It has been a real struggle getting used to this new job. It's been really exhausting and I'm trying my best to keep up with things, but I figure in the meantime, until I'm, I'm sort of have my my solid footing under me and am fully trained to know what I'm doing and I'm less <laughs> exhausted. I'm gonna put out what I can put out. If I can't do it perfect, I'm gonna do it shitty and at least I won't do nothing because I don't want to just stop. That's what I'm really afraid of and I'm not gonna do it. I have some fun stuff to show you. I've been dying to show you so many things this whole time and I'm bummed about the things I didn't get to show you, but at least I got some cool things to show you today. So let's start meeting fish. Hey, turn up the caramel. So before we get into it, I do want to tell you that I have some exciting news for you. I was a guest on a podcast. It was a really fun and exciting experience to be the guest on, on a podcast. It's called The Geekiest Podcast. I'm going to be putting a link to that in the description so that you can take a listen to it. My friend Andy that I've known for, you know, 20 plus years, he and I used to haunt houses together. It's a fun story, I'll tell you sometime. He invited me on a podcast that he co-hosts and it's basically people come on the on the show and they geek out about the things that they're geeky about. And of course they brought me on to talk about vegetables. So. We had a really fun conversation. We didn't only talk about vegetables, we talked about all kinds of stuff, and it was a lot of fun. So that is in the description. What I'm going to be showing you today, <laughs> I am still very tired. I'm trying to rally my, my energy, and I'm feeling good right now, but like, I've been so tired lately. I can't even tell you. So I went on a dopamine run, basically. I have been so anxious and so nervous and, and just... Uh, overwhelmed by the training that I've been doing and that was only stage one and stage two starts tomorrow and everybody is saying that that's going to be like really difficult and it's a lot of information that they're shoving into seven weeks so I, I've just been really feeling kind of down so I decided to go out and do things that I enjoy doing which is going to fancy food stores and buying things that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> but at least I get to show them off to you and I can't wait to show you because I bought fun things. There is a really cute little um, European store, specifically uh, Eastern European, that's not too far from me. Tanya's European deli? Yeah, because they have like meats and things. I believe deli is in the name. Not much of a plug for them, unfortunately. <laughs> I will get the proper name. I will put it in the description in case you want to you know, if you live within a five mile radius of me, you can check it out. But it's a cute little store and I hadn't been in it in a long time. I hadn't been in any store in a long time. So I was really excited to go and venture out. I got some of this tea here. This is St. Valentine's tea. It's the Tsar Nicholas II tea and it's a St. Valentine's variety. It smells so good. A friend of mine, my friend Alicia and I, way before the pandemic hit, we went to this really cool little fancy food store um, called Barber World Foods. And we had a really fun day. We went and we bought some fancy things. And some of them we ate like right then and we had like a little tea party at her place. And some of it, we would do things like buy something like this, which is quite large, and then we would split it. And so, you know, we'd each get half, you know, it would save us both money, but also we'd both get to try stuff without having to like take home a bucket of every single thing that we bought. So this was one of the things we bought and it was delicious and I ran out of it and I was so sad and so I saw it and I was like, yes! Black tea with rose petals, safflower, natural and artificial flavors. It doesn't sound exciting, but it's really, really good. I had a feeling that I was just going to be looking through the store and very often in stores like this, there's a lot of sweets, which I can't have. There's a lot of bread products, which I can't have. There's a lot of things that I can't necessarily have. And I was like, well, maybe I'll find one or two fun things to, to try. I found so many things. I found so many things. One of the things I really enjoy about different ethnic food stores is not only do you get to have the experience of feeling like you're traveling for a minute, like you're in a different place, uh, and you get to learn a lot about different cultures and how they eat and what they like and things like that, but also I find that a lot of other cultures, uh, you know, a lot of other cuisines, you know, don't take vegetables for granted the way that we do. 
uh, here in the United States. I, I feel like vegetables are such an afterthought here, but in so many other cuisines, like they they actually enjoy them and do fun things with them and have traditional foods or you know that feature them. And so there were a lot of things I got to try. I went down the aisle where there were just a million varieties of mushrooms in jars. There was a lady on her phone in that aisle before me and I heard her talking about it and I got so annoyed with her because she was on the phone with somebody and they were talking about things and I shared them on speaker which already is just rude you're inside a business like take it off speaker and the two of them were like just talking smack about mushrooms for some reason he doesn't like them and she's like oh I don't mind them they just kind of like taste like dust and I was like the so the first thing I tried these are pickled honey mushrooms. I have never heard of honey mushrooms. And when you look at the ingredients, it's honey fungus. And then it's got some other things and there's some water, vinegar. <laughs> Hashtag cat life. So I got pickled honey mushrooms. Ordinarily, I would have looked all these things up and I would have some cool facts for you about them. Unfortunately, that just goes along with the whole being extra tired lately and not being able to put the work into it that I would like to. Again, something is better than nothing. And I will. I'm going to look these up because I'm really fascinated. I don't know what honey mushrooms are. I've never heard of this. I mean, they just kind of look like mushrooms, so I'm really looking forward to trying those. I wonder... Hmm. I wonder if these are the same as candy cap mushrooms? There's a type of mushroom that's actually used in desserts. I have them dried. I haven't used them yet. I haven't tried those and I've been dying to and I just haven't gotten around to it. And those are called candy caps. I wonder if they're the same. I'm gonna have to look that up. This one I got very excited about, okay? I have never seen this in a jar. Now they had button mushrooms as you would expect. And they had, you know, a couple of other of your more normal things that you tend to see a lot more often, but they had Namico mushrooms. Now you might remember from another video that I was talking about Namico mushrooms. These are very particular. Not only are they delicious, first of all, they are so delicious, but this is a type of mushroom that has like a natural sort of gelatin coating on the outside. So it thickens anything that you put it into um, without having to add anything else. And I made some creamed Namico mushrooms on toast points because remember when you cut your toast into diagonals suddenly it unleashes the fancy i don't know why toast points are fancier than just regular toast but they are it's i don't make the rules but it was delicious and all i had to do is add a little bit of cream and cook it for a minute and it kind of reduced down and it made this beautiful creamy rich delicious savory beautiful beautiful thing all I, and i just added like a little bit of shallot and some some thyme and it didn't really need anything other than that. That's these mushrooms here. Now these are pickled, so I don't know if the acidity, you know, of, of being pickled, I don't know if that's going to reduce that, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to like cut through that gelatin. I'm not a scientist. I hate to break it to you. I'm, I'm sorry if all this time you've labored under the misconception that I was a food scientist, but it all comes out today. I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> Pickled sorrel. So, or preserved sorrel, excuse me. So I asked the lady about this. Now, she's also fascinated. Yes, you don't want this. I asked the lady, I said, you know, I, I eat sorrel fresh. I love sorrel, so I'm very familiar with it. It's a, a green, you know, that comes out in um, spring especially, and it's got a really like a, a nice lemony flavor to it. And it's really good in salads. I really like to take a, a big piece of like a whole grain bread, like a, like a freshly made whole grain bread and put some hummus on it. And then you can put some sorrel on top of that. And, and like the, the, the lemoniness kind of cuts through some of the, the fattiness so that you've got, you know, a, a, a warm sort of base flavor and like a, a, a cooler sort of a more acidic flavor on top and it just creates a cool little balance. I also really love it on a baked potato. Like, I I'm a fan of sorrel. Although, fun fact, if you have kidney problems and you're prone to kidney stones, uh, you might want to be careful because they're really high in oxalic acid. So that is 
that is your one word of caution there. So I asked her, I said, I'm used to having sorrel fresh. What would you do with this? And she said, there's a soup that they make. And she started describing it to me. And I was like, I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. There's a Russian version of it, which is what she was telling me. But I remember my grandmother used to buy in jars, Manischewitz uh, used to make it, and it's called shav, and it's like a green borscht, and you can like float some hard boiled eggs in it and the whole deal. I had been meaning to do a whole episode on that. Apparently, <laughs> it's considered like w one of the worst tasting soups there is. Not universally considered that, but I mean, I have seen many, many places online refer to it as such. So I am intrigued. So now I can make my own. Will I like it? I don't know. I guess it just depends on how you feel about sorrel. And it depends on your attitude going into it and what you were hoping it to be. These are the cutest thing ever. Just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for how cute these are going to be. These are pickled patty pan squash. These are so stinking cute. My favorite thing about patty pan squash is not only are they just like Little, little bitty so you don't have like an enormous squash that like once you cut into it what are you going to do with it you know you just got little guys and you can have as much squash as you want or as little but also they look like a cross between suns like like little cartoon suns and like little flying saucers so those are a fun one if you have kids uh you know and you want to get them into eating vegetables and you want to get them eating squash because squash doesn't sound good Squash doesn't sound like a thing that you would be excited to eat, but then you show them something that looks like little suns or flying saucers, suddenly it's a lot more enjoyable. So these have been pickled with some other vegetables in here. What's in here? Patty pan squash, water, sugar, salt, dill, horseradish, garlic, raspberry leaf, bay leaf, uh, chili peppers, black pepper, citric acid, and distilled vinegar. That's a cool combination of stuff. Like, that's so cool. It's, uh, the horseradish and dill, raspberry leaf, bay leaf, like, that's gonna be a really interesting flavor. I think what I might do is do a, a, a Bloody Mary episode. I've been thinking about doing that for a while because I do love a Bloody Mary. And a Bloody Mary is, like, the perfect opportunity to use all your pickled vegetables, just, like, anything that you've got pickled or preserved in the fridge uh, you just stick them on a stick and just like shove it in there. And it's like a cross between a beverage and a salad. Who doesn't love that? So this one doesn't have the name in English, although it does on the back, which I can't pronounce. Tekamali? It's T-K-E-M-A-L-I, yellow. Yeah, that's exactly what it says on the front. A lot of the things in this store weren't written in English. A lot of it is written in the Cyrillic letters. And fun fact, I can read Cyrillic letters. I don't know Russian. I can't speak any uh, language that uses Cyrillic letters, but I did teach myself to read them phonetically. So at least I can sort of make things out. And sometimes words, you know, there are cognates between languages and sometimes you can sort of figure out what something is. So I did a lot of that, but also <laughs> I kind of gave myself like a little bit of eye strain while I was in there because my mask was fogging up my glasses and it's kind of a little bit dark in there and I'm trying really hard to read the, the letters on things and sometimes they're really small and I was just like Ugh. and so I by the time I got out of there it was just like <laughs> but it was it was worth it it was it was a lot of fun so this is kind of like a hot sauce and it is mm, yeah yellow plum puree I don't know if that's meant to be actual plum or plum tomato I don't know. Yellow plum puree, garlic, mixed spices. So coriander, dill, basil, bay leaf, marjoram, parsley, black pepper, celery, thyme, and mint, red pepper, coriander, and sorbic acid. That sounds like such a cool combination of flavors. And yet, yeah, there's no, sh no sugars, which seems difficult to fathom because if the first ingredient is plums, uh... Yeah, but there's no added sugar. I don't know. There's not a lot of information about what it's supposed to taste like or what you're supposed to put it on. This, I am, I'm too curious. I can't hold off. I feel like I should make a prediction about what this is gonna smell like. I predict sweet, because if it's plums, there should be some sweetness. 
but a complex herbal sort of bouquet. <laughs> Let's see. <coughs> the inside of the lid looks a bit... Is that okay? I mean, it looks like it might just be some... Uh... Part of me is like, that's just spices that have gathered. And the other part of me is like, that's botulism, put it away. If it was botulism, though, probably the little tab would, would have been like poppy poppy. Oh, it's not, there is no tab. Man, am I gonna get botulism? It smells, I genuinely don't know how this smells. Here's, here, here's my dilemma. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but like, there's definitely floaty bits and those are the herbs that are in there and that's fine. And this stuff under the lid is probably those herbs, but like, ugh, I might not. I don't want to waste that. But I also really, really, really don't want botulism. On to the next thing. I got this bread. My friend in Estonia was telling me specifically about a type of bread called Borodinsky bread. And it is a heavy, dense rye bread. And they had it there. They call it a uh, Dark rye bread Borodino, uh, although when you take a look at the Cyrillic, it does say Borodinsky. And so I bought this. Now, here's the crazy thing. I bought this a week ago, and I forgot that I bought this because I was expecting to make this video a lot sooner than this, and then I didn't make this video, and I was like, oh, I should have eaten that bread, and then I took a look at it, and it looks exactly the same as when I bought it. I, is this forever bread? Did I, did I buy bread for life? Is this, is this a pet now that I have to take care of and is going to be with me until the end? Uh, cause it looks exactly the same and it's so dense. I have a feeling it's one of those things where like it can't go moldy even if it wanted to. I don't, I don't want to take any chances on that, but this is so thick. Oh, and I'm reading the ingredients. There's some really cool things in there. Dark rye flour, wheat flour, water, artificial honey, rye malt extract, kvass concentrate. That's really cool. Kvass is a, um, there's a couple of different versions of kvass, but the original version is like a fermented sort of alcoholic beverage made from bread. So that's cool. There's kvass concentrate in there. Oh, the other kind is like a beet kvass. I made that one time. It's really cool. And some coriander. That's all these things all over. There's some coriander. I kind of want to try it out. So there's another thing that I bought, and it's been in the fridge because it has to go in the fridge. But I just looked at it, and I, I opened it when I first bought it because I wanted to smell it. But then I held off on eating it. And I just realized that it says that once you open it, you're supposed to consume it within 48 hours. It's been considerably longer than 48 hours, and it's a shrimp paste. Shrimp, not paste, shrimp spread. It smells exactly the same as when I first opened it, which is shrimpy. Doesn't smell bad at all. Actually, it smells like something that you would like stuff something with, like you could stuff mushrooms with this, and it would probably taste like really, really nice. But it says to consume it within 48 hours, and it's been longer than 48 hours a lot. I'm not a risk taker. I'm not a food waster and I'm not a risk taker. And right now those two aspects of my personality are fighting. I'm also not a decision maker. So that one has joined the party. So the three of them are duking it out. So I think I'm going to put both of these in the fridge and sleep on it and think about it. Maybe make a decision tomorrow? What I'll do instead, I'm gonna try this bread. A little bit of butter. Oh my god. This is... That is dense. This is a dense crumb. Smells nice. I have a feeling it's gonna be sort of similar to the Falkhorn brat, which was um, a bread that I showed off in an earlier video, which is also a very dense rye bread. I think this might be denser. 
Let's see. Let's see. The coriander really, because it's whole coriander, every now and again you just get like a pop of it in your mouth and it's really noticeable. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of coriander seed. So it's kind of nice. It is very chewy. Also, I accidentally just dropped it, but it's fine. It's okay. Very chewy. It's, 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 this is a bread of substance. It's not going to be for everybody. It tastes healthy. Uh, it tastes responsible. It tastes like doing your taxes on time. But with a little something extra. You know, like there, there's some, a little taste of something slightly exotic in there. You could probably do some really interesting things with this. Here's where my decisions get iffy. I got excited. I saw something that looked good to me. I saw they had 800 varieties of it. And so, like a responsible person, I chose one and I went home with it. No, I didn't. I bought five different versions of exactly the same thing. A thing, by the way, I have not tried. I think I'm going to like it, but if it doesn't taste like what I think it's going to taste like, I have five jars of something that I hate. So, I really hope I like this. <laughs> So what this is, is like a salad, and these are just different versions of the same salad. They all appear to be cabbage-based. They all appear to have some carrot and stuff in there. So this one here, this is um, village style. They're all just slightly, slightly different versions. So village style, cabbage, water, cucumbers, and brine with some horseradish, garlic, salt, bay leaf, Red pepper, white vinegar, carrot, onion, sugar, salt, oil. Pretty basic. That sounds nice. This is a slightly different version. A couple of these, which I really appreciate, have a little bit less sugar, and they've added a little bit of saccharin um, and a sulfate and potassium. So, you know, those are artificial sweeteners. So you still get a little, you know, the sweetness, but a lot less sugar. So that was very attractive. This one here, this is called a lunch salad. And I think it's exactly the same thing, except with artificial sweeteners. Um, Cause this guy, yeah. cabbage, carrots, sour, cucumber, onion, vinegar, salt, sugar, canola oil, spices, sodium, saccharin, and potassium and sulfate. Uh, that sounds the same except with different sweeteners. But then, hold up, you've got Salatka Obiadova dinner salad. That was the lunch salad. This is the dinner salad. So what is the difference here? This appears to be Polish. Some of these are in so in like Russian or something like that. And this definitely appears to be Polish. So maybe it's just exactly the same thing, but in Polish. Uh, white cabbage, carrot, sour cucumbers, onion, pepper, water, vinegar, sugar, salt, antioxidant. I think I bought five jars of exactly the same goddamn thing. Like a rational person would. What's this one here? This is the Kremlin version. So, these two... Hang on. These three... Yeah. These are all the same brand. So there has to be a difference between the three of them. They're has to be. So we already looked at the lunch salad. The Kremlin salad. <laughs> uh, cabbage, carrots, red pepper, onion, vinegar, salt, sugar, canola oil, spices, and sweeteners. What, what, where's, what's different? What have I done? What, what have I been allowed? Why was I unsupervised in this store? Cabbage, cabbage, carrots, carrots. Cucumber. Oh, one's got cucumber and one doesn't. One has red pepper and one doesn't. That is literally, literally it. Okay. Okay. This guy here, what is the difference? This is the Kiev 
vegetable salad. What, what, what's different here? I don't, I don't know. Cabbage, water, carrots, onion, vinegar, salt, sugar, canola oil, spices, sweeteners. What is the difference? How? This one doesn't have cucumber or red pepper. That's the difference. Why did I buy so much of this? Oh, what was I thinking? They they did also have some fresh made there um, in the fridge, and it looked so good. It was a hot day, and it looked so cold and so refreshing and cooling. I have an idea of what I think this is going to taste like, and if it tastes like that, then I will be happy to have five jars of it. If it doesn't taste like that, let's not think like that. Let's... Let's, let's not jump to that conclusion yet. Here's what I want it to, to taste like. Let's start here. In Florida, there was a very famous deli. There were two of them, actually, uh, owned by the same person. Wolfie Cohen owned Wolfie's and the Rascal House. We used to go to the Rascal House all the time. And it was a Jewish deli. And I love this place. I have a million great memories. It, it is not there anymore, which is an absolute tragedy. And one of the cool things was that on the table when you got there, set into the table were these metal containers to keep everything very, very cold. And they would have various pickles. You could have like pickled tomatoes, you know, great big dill kosher pickles, um, all kinds of different like um, appetizer kind of things, uh, little salad -y things. And they would have this kosher coleslaw, which uh, it wasn't creamy. It kind of looked like this. And it was a little sweet and a little tangy and so good. And I've only had it once since leaving there, and that was at uh, a little Jewish deli here in Portland called Kenny and Zooks. I think I talked about that already, and it, I want to try making that someday. So I have it in my head. This might taste like that. If it does, I'm going to be intensely happy. I will not be able to withstand just the, the, the waves of joy. If it doesn't taste like that, I'm going to be very disappointed. I'm afraid to open it. I want to be, I want to, I want this. I want this to be what I think it is. No, it isn't the same thing. But that doesn't mean it won't be good. It sort of has a little bit of a sauerkrauty kind of smell. I made a little of a steak. I made, I, I made a little mistake. <laughs> Hello. Did you think this was something you were going to want? You know what it is? You know what I think it is? Either this cabbage has been cooked. I think the cabbage has been cooked. It's got a cooked cabbage kind of taste to it. That's the difference. It doesn't taste like the coleslaw that I wanted it to taste like. Because the coleslaw would have been raw cabbage. It's not showcasing the best parts of the cabbage. It's not showcasing the best parts of any of these ingredients. I don't hate it. Do I wish that I hadn't bought five jars of it? Yeah. Yeah. They weren't expensive, though. At least there's that. And the nice thing about pickled things is they keep forever. It's one of the reasons I bought so many pickled things. Because, you know... When you're really busy and you're really tired, it's hard to keep up with fresh things, but when you have things pickled or you have things in jars or something like that and they're preserved, you have a little bit more time to figure out what you're going to do and you have a little bit more time to use things and stuff like that. So, you know, that was my hope. I, I kind of want something to get that flavor out of my mouth. So, I'll make room in the fridge for this. I'll figure it out. Oh, should I do the patty pound squash or should I do the honey mushrooms? <sighs> it's pickled honey mushrooms. Yeah, they won't have to be eaten right away. Like, no, I mean, neither of them do. That's the great thing about pickles. Even when you open them, like, they don't have to be eaten immediately. They're going to stay good in your fridge forever. All right.
don't know what that smells like. Alright. I'm genuinely scared. I'm genuinely scared of these. Oh. Oh, so slimy. So slimy. Oh, God. I was like, is that why they're called honey mushrooms? <gasps> Maybe that's why they're called honey mushrooms, because it looks like they have honey dripping from them. Hang on. Let me get it into the... And you can see, it kind of... Uh, it, it does like that. I feel like I should have looked this up and made sure that it's not, like, poisonous to eat like this. I'm sure it's not poisonous to eat like this, but, like... I mean, it would say something. Keep refrigerated after opening. Blah, blah, blah. That tastes nice. Okay, it tastes nice. The texture is off-putting. But if I were to put that in something, that wouldn't be bad. It actually, it doesn't smell mushroomy, but the flavor is very mushroomy. It actually sort of reminds me a little bit of, um, not quite a hedgehog, it almost reminds me a little bit of like a chanterelle or something. It's just, I don't understand that, that slime on it. So I, I just happened to have bought two slimy types of mushrooms. Once you get over that initial sensation after you put it in your mouth, it's, it's not bad. So good night from me. Good night from Stella. Thank you so much for hanging out with me once again in my kitchen. It has been a lot of fun. It's been too long. I hope it won't be too long until the next one. Um, please remember to check out the notes in the description and the whole deal. There'll be a lot of all, all of the things that I am forgetting to say right now including maybe you should like and subscribe if you would like to. Until next time. Bye. Hey, turn up the caramello and chisel on the shizney. It's time for me to walk. Let me introduce myself. I'm a cheetah burrito. My pants are made of leather. I find a high.